because the MD-82 aircraft is the third most popular aircraft ever built, um, and there are still uh, several hundred, six or seven hundred still operating, uh, many of those in uh, USA and several in Europe and other parts of the world. It is an extremely robust and reliable aircraft and a, and a real workhorse in disguise. In terms of age, it's really not a relevant factor in this. Aircraft, um, like other machines, uh, are one of the most, well, actually more so than any other machine. The aircraft industry and airline industry is most heavily regulated. So aircraft, although an aircraft may be of a certain age, majority of the parts on that aircraft will actually be replaced very frequently. So it's not really relevant to talk about the age of an aircraft. The analogy I always use is that I've got a broom at home that's 20 years old, but during that 20 years it's had five new handles and four new heads. So how old is that room really? Um, and that is with an aircraft. The engines get replaced, the parts get replaced, the landing gear get replaced, and these aircraft, like the aircraft that's away at the moment, go for regular maintenance checks um, where parts are inspected, um, you know, absolutely thoroughly stripped right down, rebuilt, repainted, and put back on and tested. And so the aircraft are extremely reliable machines, and uh, these aircraft, are, uh, more, more so than the others, are, are extremely reliable and extremely robust. In terms of the new fleet, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the MD 82 is absolutely the right aircraft for Redjet, for, for our growth, and for a startup. Certainly in the future, we may look to other aircraft, more fuel efficient, etc. Um, but that's something that will happen in the future. Um, I wouldn't like to put a time frame on that. But certainly, that's, as we expand our services and we grow, we will be looking for the manufacturers and the lessors in the market to see if we can actually expand into new generation aircraft as, as time goes on. Redjet has it is making a difference. It's essentially the guy these government. Those spares, the Caribbean Airlines and have charges. And again, I am not picking on them. This is not something I'm just using to highlight of what was the problem in the region. Problem in the region was excessively high fares and a lot of inflexibility in travel. And these are now a, 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 a very low percentage of what these fares were uh, up to recently. Okay? So um, that's why we think um, Redjet are here for a long time, for a long term. Because these are things that people want. This is the benefits that have been brought. That's why you'll see um, some countries now saying that they want red jets to fly into their country. But they see the benefits. An 83% increase year on year and the amount of people travelling from Guyana to Barbados on that route. 83% increase year on year this year. And everybody says that we're in a bad time. It's hard to get growth. It's hard to grow. It's hard to get new business. And yet, the airports in, uh, in, 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 in Barbados and Guyana have got an 83% increase in passengers on one way. And so, you know, we, we really do want to uh, um, make sure that the, the message that we have, which is a great message, um, is uh, highlighted. For the purpose of today is to push the record straight. And as Lisa said, Redjet is an airline for consumers. Uh, and it's still by consumers. And it has always been our goal, and a key part of our promise uh, that we made to consumers at the very start that we would be honest and upfront. We are clearly desperately disappointed for passengers who have experienced any travel delay or disruption. I can assure everybody that the Red Jet staff and management have worked tirelessly to ensure that passengers were given as much information as we could that everyone who was affected could be looked after to the best of our ability. I know that some people will still feel very disappointed, but I can only say that the staff that Red Jet has were a very flexible group of people. They worked absolutely incredibly hard. They worked on all hours in the morning. They had total commitment. And obviously primarily our, our main source of information to try and get people is through the call centre. And the call center was supported by everybody in the office. Anybody who wasn't involved in the actual maintenance of the aircraft were involved in trying to contact people. Um, and I think you know it, 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 it is a great credit to the workforce and um, that we, as an organization, were prepared to actually put in the work. I, I don't believe any other organization would try as hard as people in Red Jet tried. Uh, and I think. You know, certainly as a Barbadian company, 
think people should be very proud of what these people in Barbados have put into this effort to try and uh, get the contact to um, to our uh, customers. As I said, there, um, you know, our call center is uh, has been obviously overwhelmed by the response. People have said they can't get through to our our call center numbers. Um, our call center has been uh, under much greater demand uh, for business than we had anticipated. I think it's fair to say that you know we had anticipated um, load factors, and we've already uh, indicated this. Load factors were around about 55 percent in July and August on our routes. And um, the load factors to Guyana in July and August were 78 and 85 percent, which is a phenomenal uh, uh, amount of traffic. And um, we started selling our tickets to um, to Trinidad um, on the 18th of July for effectively services that create that commence. Uh, on the 8th of August. In August we would have achieved a uh, load factor of 69% from the standing start. That is incredible in international aviation statistics that that kind of violence would go through. We clearly didn't anticipate those kind of violence. We're absolutely delighted we got those kind of violence, but we didn't anticipate it. And so we have had to uh, re-evaluate the, uh, our, our call center and, and the capabilities and the capacity we have there. And we're in the process of, of, of upgrading that uh, in terms of numbers of people, in terms of lines available, uh, and we're working very hard to get those things right. But they just don't happen overnight, because you know, obviously the facilities where we are, we, we have to look at that, we have to look at the infrastructure in terms of additional lines, uh, and we actually have to obviously train people. So we are working very hard at that. And then when this hit us, you know, that was just another huge amount of volume coming into the call centre. So we apologise that we weren't able to cope with all the the, the, the um, traffic coming in, um, but I have to say we did what we could do to try and mediate against that. We people on mobile phones, we had people ringing from the office with details of people, and I will talk about that later on. But I just want to get that out there today. Going forward, Redjet will continue to deliver the most reliable and the lowest fares for services in the, uh, for consumers in the region. There is no doubt about that, and again, we will go into that slightly more detail later on. We have in place uh, leases for additional aircraft to come into our fleet, and thus that will help alleviate and uh, mitigate against uh, any, of, uh, any future occurrences that we may have in terms of technical issues or other issues. Um, and we're making a large investment in expanding RedJet fleet to give us greater coverage. Um, obviously, RedJet is a new business, and we recognise that in some instances we haven't got our communications as we would have liked them to be. But Regia has always said that it listens to its passengers, it listens to consumers. And the feedback that we've got from our passengers are, and we've been very open about this, and saying that so people are saying we should have made the decision to cancel flights earlier. Our internal communication ourselves to actually cancel flights could have been better. The mitigation of that, I would say that the engineers work extremely hard trying to repair the aircraft. And they were reliant on, on times and information to give them for parts to arrive and various things to happen. And as Kevin said, it, it just became more complex than it was originally thought. So we did. Uh, we, we will learn from that experience. I think also um, one of the issues is that the, the, the contact. Sorry. <laughs> Passenger details uh, that we have, uh, the, the data we have, we have got for them, has proven on occasions to be um, to be inaccurate and incomplete, and so we have to work harder at making sure that when we're getting passenger data for future communication, that we have um, data that, that that will be more effective for us to use. People said that our website and our social media wasn't as good as it should have been. And we didn't put up enough information on that. We didn't. Uh, we didn't communicate in those forums and the way we put it. And so we will work at making sure that we get those things uh, right. Um, and we need to keep stressing um, to people when they are booking that the data required must be accessible for emergency contact. I can't say enough of how much time we actually had to put into trying to ring numbers that wouldn't answer, that email addresses that proved to be inaccurate. Um, people, you know, inadvertently, I suppose, give you a number in the country, but when they travel, they may change the SIM and 
do other things so that when you try to contact that number one people are drawing, it's not, uh, you just can't reach it. And I think there's also the issue that, um, you know, from uh, data transfer of information, um, line doesn't support data in Guyana. So we have issues with that kind of and that we're learning these things and I'm not criticizing line for that by the way. I'm saying that's something that you know we learn as we go along so that we can actually pick up these and, and make sure we're we're much more uh, on top of what information we really need. But we do need to stress um, at booking um, to all customers that the data they give us we must be able to contact them at short numbers. And it is by the way an international industry standard that people are expected to check their and um, their travel details 24 hours beforehand to say see if there have been any schedule changes or any disruptions. Now we all know, and I don't do it, most people don't do it, but it's again something that when something like this happens, it does identify the, you know, people should be uh, checking their, their their information. And I'm not by the way using that in any way as an excuse. I'm just saying that it is an issue that we face and it is a, is a significant issue for us. <coughs> Moving forward, um, operational performance. Um, despite all our disruptions, Redjet is still the best performing airline for the issues that are there. Less cancelled flights, more on time flights, less lost baggage, less passenger satisfaction. As we said, we will be putting in place and continue to put in place. Um, more systems, more procedures to deliver up to our passengers and we will work to continue to minimize any disruption. We will continue to be the most reliable airline for passengers with the lowest fares and we will continue as we are being honest with our passengers. Why do we say we're the best airline in the skies? Well pre-disruption we had a 92.5% on time performance. Not the best on time performance for the Clearly the disruption was over a period of time and it had an impact and it's now at 83.2 percent. But given that the international kind of accepted norm standard for on-time performance to be good is 85 percent, despite what's happened, we're still pretty much in that region. In terms of flight completions, completions post this disruption, we're at 100 percent. Now it's 95 percent. Uh, that is still an extremely uh, good performance. Um, our baggage performance is still as good as it ever was. And 98.5% of our passengers have said that Redjet is excellent value. And if you take that against the benchmark that before we started, only 4% of people travel in the region said that travel was good value. So that's a huge turnaround uh, that Redjet has made in consumer mind. And these figures don't lie. In terms of our expansion, well, Redjet is making the equivalent of a further $6 million expansion. Um, and we can announce that we have two additional aircraft with an option for two more. We have one that's due to come in in December, and a fourth one to come in in quarter one of next year. They're exactly the same aircraft, MD-82, from American Airlines, all with 149 seats. And these will um, create over 75 new jobs in quarter one of 2012, and another 75 in the last, the last part of 2012. And these jobs will, will primarily be in 47 in sales administration, 25 pilots, 48 cabin crew, 30 in maintenance and uh, engineering staff and operations. So a lot of those jobs will be in Barbados as well. And this is Red Jet's commitment to grow and continue to grow uh, and to be what we want to be, Caribbean's lowest fair airline and the Caribbean's best airline. So why are we doing that? Well, as I said earlier, the amount of the response that we have received on the Guyanese route and then the Port of Spain route has just been overwhelming. We have been uh, just blown away by the, uh, the amount of people who want to fly. Uh, we believed that um, we would grow the market we believed that there was a, a demand there for travel that people just couldn't afford. But we genuinely didn't believe that the um, response would be what it has been. And so we have the great confidence to know that uh, when we can deliver, Red Jet has something that people want and that we are what we say want to be, and that is the, the consumer's champion. Um, 
we are also going to be able to uh, launch over the next um, three months, we'll be able to launch another six additional low fare routes across the region. So people are going to want to know what those routes are, I'm sure. Um, but what I can tell you is that uh, those routes will include Panama, which I think would be a destination for uh, for um, Barbadians and other people in the region that would be of great interest. Clearly people know the permission to go to Jamaica. It's a question of where we go to Jamaica from, apart from uh, um, um, Barbados. And we obviously have St. Martin as a as a, as a, as a, as a route as well. So that's the kind of things that we're looking at. We're also looking for life in Guyana direct to uh, direct to Antigua and the commission for that route as well. And so again that's another uh, route that didn't service on a non-stop basis today. <coughs> So they're the routes that we're looking at. And in terms of our, our, our operations, as we, we've always known, as a start-up airline, you know, you have to start somewhere and you want to grow. You need to get some critical mass in terms of numbers of aircraft you have. And so we are now in a position to see where we have, and we've always said we would build our business on firm economic ground. And uh, you know, that is firm economic grounds to us, and number one, having permission to fly, and number two, recognizing the uh, the, the potential that a route has. We started off slowly in terms of we only went to Guyana and still go to Guyana four times a week. We will be building that up over the next couple of months. That will build up to five, six, seven times a week. We will be developing the service from here to Port Spain. And we are launching, we're starting to fly from uh, Port Spain to Guyana on the 12th of September. So, um, you know, these are all uh, the reasons why we believe um, we can uh, mitigate against the And as I said at the very start, the airline industry is fundamentally an industry that suffers from uh, disruption. Uh, it doesn't, you know, I've given you many examples of disruption and how it affects. Uh, what we are trying to do in terms of this is we have taken action to, obviously in the short term, we now have the ability to be able to bring in a spare aircraft from a US carrier at very short notice. Commission is now in place. So if we do have a, a problem in, in the next number of weeks, we can bring that airport and we will bring that aircraft in very shortly. We have five aircraft on our op specification, so it's not a good line with one aircraft. We have an option of five aircraft to be available to us. And they can just fly down here literally as an airport. And we want to make sure by the while we're growing that we can actually be even more important <coughs> in our operations. Um, we again, uh, as a as a new as a new business, and um, we are we are learning all the time. We are finding out new things. I think if you take the analogy of a of a, a software product that's launched on the market, there's always little things around it that will need to be tweaked or whatever. And you know, as we hit things like this disruption, we've learned a huge amount. So if anything happens in the future, we're obviously in a much better position, much better prepared much better processes in place, much better procedures in place to be able to deal with these things. We're obviously being a lot more diligent in a particular call centre where we're gathering information from, from the passengers and we will have a lot easier access to those passengers if anything happens. And we'll have a lot more facilities to be able to, to get to them before. Just to give you some idea as to what is the real RegJet message? Why is RegJet so popular? And if you look at the outside column, Trinidad to Barbados, that's this way, from here to, 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 to Trinidad. And you just look at the red jet fares for the coming four months, and you just look at the business. Now, I'm not trying to pick on Caribbean Airlines here, or the or anybody else. <laughs> I'm not trying to do that. That's not the purpose of this. The purpose of this is we made a promise coming in that we would reduce the cost of travel in the region by up to 60%. I don't think there's anybody who believed that if Red Jet wasn't here, that those fares would be in the Caribbean Airlines column. What were those fares people paying this time last year? Considerably higher than those. So we have brought benefit to the consumer. We've brought what we said choice and options. People can now choose. They have they have choice. And that's what we promised to bring in. And that's what Red Jet is delivering. Yes, we've had an issue, we've had a problem. But the overall situation is that Red Jet has brought this benefit to the region. 
and will continue to do so. Um, and that is a huge, huge reduction. And therefore, from Granby Adams' perspective and from other airports' perspective, that just means there will be more and more passengers coming through their airports, helping them with their revenues and with the revenues from the uh, retail operations and all the other service providers within the airport. So that's a great news story for uh, for Barbados, and it's a great news story for Trinidad as well, because Trinidad Airport benefits on the other side of it. So that means there will be a lot more people traveling the region. You see, in, um, in Trinidad, Diana, where there was a monopoly on anchors. And one of the reasons why the, the Guyanese government have been so good to us and so supportive of Reggie is because of the cost of travel from Georgetown, Diana, to Port of Spain and Trinidad.